Hey everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to make this really cute little key fob card pouch. So, let's get started. So here's the little pouch that we're going to make. It's really a very fast project. It's great for using up all your scraps of fabric, and it's a really great project for making to sell at craft shows. So the first thing that we need to do is make a pattern, and I promise you it's going to be very easy. So what you want to do is get yourself a piece of paper and cut it down to 11 inches long and 5 inches wide. Then you'll want to draw a line right down the center, so that would be 2.5 inches out from each edge. And then you want to draw one more line right over here, which is 2 inches down from the top. So in this section right here, we're going to create the shape of our flap. So you can see here, I, my flap is curved. And you can do this a couple of different ways, and your flap certainly doesn't have to be curved. You can really be creative with this and come up with your own unique shape for your flap. But one simple way to do it is to take your piece of paper and fold it completely in half on the line that you drew. Try and get your edges even. Okay. And then just fold right on that edge there, right on that line. And then you can very simply just take a pair of scissors. Now, you don't want your shape to go below this two inch line, okay? Because this is the area for your flap. And you can just take a pair of scissors and start out with a little bit of a straight cut and then just start to angle it. If you feel more comfortable drawing it, then go ahead and draw it. It's really totally up to you how you want to do this. So that would be one way to create the shape for your flap. Another way to do it would just be to take something round. You could take a plate, anything that you have, and just lay it down on here, and then just draw around the shape that you have. So if it's a dish or a flat lid, whatever, just trace right around the edge here to get your shape. Another way to do this that I find kind of nice is to look through all of your pattern pieces and find a flap for one of the from one of the patterns that you have. Now this is from a popular pattern and what I've done is I've just drawn a line right down the center of that piece and then I put it right down here and I um, am matching up this center line with the center line of the paper. Okay, and then you just take your pen and trace it. Okay, and I'm sure you have lots of patterns with flaps that you could use for this. And then you would just go ahead and cut out that line and that would be your flap. Now, once you have your flap shape determined, you just take the piece of paper again and right from the tip here, you're going to measure down nine inches. Okay, and just line it up with that center line, line your ruler up with the center line, and then just draw a line right across, and then you'll cut this uh, line off, and then your pattern will be 5 inches wide by 9 inches tall. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this out, and now I have my pattern piece all done, and that was very quick easy and simple to do. So again, from this point right here, right down to the bottom, should be 9 inches, and then it should be 5 inches across. Now that you have your pattern done, you want to go ahead and cut out two pieces of fabric. I have my exterior fabric here, and this will be for my lining. And each piece is measured 9 inches high by 5 inches wide. And on the exterior piece, I fused a piece of woven interfacing to the back. And the lining, I have not fused with anything. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Then you want to take your pattern, and you want to lay it down onto the exterior piece with the woven side in, of interfacing face up. And then you're just going to uh, trace your, um, the shape of your flap right over here. Okay, 
So you just trace it on and then you're going to cut it out. And I will mention that I'm using a friction pen. It's the Pilot Friction Pen that erases when you apply heat to it, but that line that has gotten erased with the heat can come back with cold. So I only use it to mark cutting lines or within my seam allowances. Then once you have this uh, shape, you just cut it out. Okay, and then you're going to go over to the sewing machine and you're going to put these pieces right sides together. So right side of the exterior to the right side of the lining. And I want my design to be up this way. And you're going to put the straight edges together at the bottom and you're going to sew with a one quarter of an inch seam right along that bottom seam right there. I'm at the sewing machine and I'm sewing on a Juki TL2010Q and I'm going to sew with a stitch length of 2.5. So I have the bottom edges of both the exterior and the lining together here. So there's my exterior and my lining. And now all I'm going to do is sew straight across the bottom edge here. I'm going to use my presser foot and I'm going to use the edge of the presser foot here as my guide for my one quarter inch seam. And on my machine that should give me a scant quarter of an inch. So first I'm going to back stitch and then I'll go forward. And back stitch. Now what you'll want to do next is take this over to your iron and you're going to open it up. Okay? And you're going to press this seam open. Give it a nice steam pressing. Okay, so now that seam has been pressed open and the next thing you want to do is put the wrong sides together. So wrong side of the exterior to the wrong side of your lining. And then you're going to top stitch right across here with the seam that you just created. So here's the seam right here. And we're just going to top stitch right across that edge. And I'm still just staying on my two and a half inch stitch length here. Back stitch at both ends. And then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step is to make a little tab that we can attach the swivel hook onto. Okay, now mine is three quarters of an inch wide and you need to cut your tab to a certain width and the way you do it is you take the width of your hardware, which mine is three quarters of an inch, and you want to multiply 0.75 or three quarters of an inch times four. That gives you a length of three inches, okay? If you were using a piece of hardware that was one inch for another project, you would multiply the one inch times four and you would cut out a four inch strip of fabric. But for this purpose we're cutting out a three inch strip of fabric. Then we take the fabric and we fold it directly in half and we iron a seam right in here. Okay, then you're going to open it up and you're going to fold both ends in towards the center just like that and you'll press down these uh, folds right here and then you'll fold everything in half with the two folded edges meeting. Okay? And you'll press everything really well. And now this is three quarters of an inch and it'll fit very well into my little hook here. Alright? But before I attach the hook, I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge on both long sides. And I will do that off camera right now. Now I have the little tab all top stitch and it's ready to be used with my swivel hook and I'm just going to put that aside for a second and now we're going to work with the pouch. So here's the exterior 
it's been sewn to the lining and right where we sewed the lining and the exterior together along the bottom I want to take a ruler and mark three and a quarter inches up from this edge so just make your line three and a quarter inches up from that edge right there and then we're just going to take this and fold it right along that chalk line and we're going to press it and give it a little bit of a pressing on each side use some steam if you have to and now that we've pressed it we're going to sort of open this up okay and we want to fold back on this line so we're going to fold it up so where your pressed creases right there you're going to fold back on that okay and just press again okay I'm going to press from both sides okay and now what you should have is your exterior together okay so line up the edges and then you're going to take your lining and you're going to have that come up also all right now the bottom edges here these bottom folded pressed edges should at least be even but you might even want to make it a little bit shorter on the lining side so you can just bring it up just a tiny bit more and then press it in place just make sure that all your side seams are even okay and now you'll notice that I never um, cut away the lining up here the way I did on the exterior for the flap that's okay don't worry about that so what you should have now is the exterior of the pouch folded against itself and then you should have the lining of the pouch folded against itself and all of your edges need to be even okay and then you're going to take your swivel hook and put the tab in it if you want to go over to the sewing machine and just baste these raw edges together you can do that and you just want to pull this back and just put your hook just like that and then clip it with a wonder clip or a pin whatever you have that you want to use okay and then you're going to fold this back up this way and you're going to put a few clips in okay just like this and where the uh, swivel hook is just hook everything together with the clip okay so what's going to happen now is we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to start sewing we're going to sew up one side around the curve and down the other side but before you do that you're going to take your lining side and you're just going to fold it out of the way for now okay so you'll put your clip back in and what you should have is the lining folded out of the way on this side and then you can take something you can take a pin or something and place it right around here and then you'll know that up to this point right here where the pin is the lining is completely out of the way so we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we will start sewing we're going to sew up this side for a little bit then when we get to where the pin is we're going to stop and then we'll pull the lining back down into place and then we'll continue sewing all the way around so let's go over to the sewing machine right now and do that okay so I'm back at the machine and I'm still going to sew with a stitch length of 2.5 and what I have right now is again the lining is flipped out of the way. I'm going to take the piece and put it under my presser foot. I'm going to back stitch.
and I'm going to sew just before I get to that pin. And you can feel where the uh, lining is folded back here. You don't want to sew over that lining. So just back stitch again right there. And now that I've done that, I can take the patch out and I can fold the lining back into place. Then I'll turn it back over and I'm going to start stitching again right where I stopped. Now, you do want to back stitch again a little bit here. Okay, and now you're just going to sew all the way over to the other side. And I'm just using the edge of my presser foot to follow along the edge of the pouch. Take one more stitch. Follow that curve around. Actually, one more. It's hard with the camera in the way to see how far I've gone. Okay, now put your presser foot back down and you're just going to sew to the bottom. And when you get to where the, um, the swivel hook is, which is right here, I'm going to go over that section just a couple of times. Okay. Now we're going to go and turn everything right side out. So here's everything sewn into place and the first thing I'm going to do is just trim away that excess lining. So now you can see that the pouch has been sewn all around from the exterior side but on the lining side, it's only partially sewn around and the lining is not sewn down in this section here and you have an opening. And this is the opening that we're going to use to turn the pouch right side out. So before you do that, you want to clip off some of these corners. Just make sure that you don't cut into your stitching there. And I'm going to clip this corner, but on this side, I'm only going to clip the corner on the exterior side. I'm not going to cut the corner on the lining side, okay? And now, you're going to reach in here, okay? And you're going to start pushing everything out. It's a little tough when you first get started, but once it really starts to come out, it uh, goes pretty quickly. So you're just going to pull and tug. Just keep pushing. And there's my swivel hook. I can pull that. Okay, it's starting to come out. Now the next thing that you want to do is get a point turner. So I have my point turner right here and what I want to do is turn it lining side out. Okay, and then where the opening is, I can reach in with that point turner and I can start pushing out my corners. You always want to be careful when you're pushing out corners. Now to get to the flap, you need to be on this side. So if I put my point turner in from this side right here, I can only go to this corner. But if I put my point turner in on this side, then I can get up to where the flap is and I can start pushing out those corners there. Okay. 
you'll be able to get to both ends like that. I'm going to kind of go along the seam line there. If you want, you can clip the curves in that seam. I don't do it. It's totally up to you whatever you want to do. And then once you do that, you want to take your fingers and roll these edges. You want to get it to the point where both the exterior and the lining are equally showing up here on top. Okay, so you'll roll it, and then you'll take your iron. You want to iron this down well. Okay, so you're just going to keep working that until you get all the seams rolled out to the edges, getting it to look nice. Okay, and then you'll go over to the sewing machine. You're going to push this in here, and you'll sew this um, opening closed. So you can either do it with um, your sewing machine, sewing very close to the edge, or you can hand stitch it. I actually prefer to hand stitch mine. I just think it looks nicer on the inside. But if you do sew it with the sewing machine, right under here is where I folded the uh, exterior back in. You don't want to catch that with any stitches. Okay? So go ahead and close up that opening. So I did stitch mine down on the machine just to make it quicker for the video. And now you want to turn everything with the right side out or the exterior side out. And then with your point turner, you'll go ahead and push out those corners a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to reach my finger in here, push it out with my finger a little bit first, and then I'll get those edges nice and sharp on both sides, okay? And then you're going to take your iron and you're going to give everything a very nice pressing, okay? Alright, and your flap is going to come down like this, and you're going to iron that in place. Okay, and then the last thing to do will be to put a little snap on here. Now, you can hand sew on a snap if you want to. Uh, if you want, you can even put a little bit of Velcro on this side of the flap and right here, and then maybe cover up the Velcro with a pretty little button. I'm actually going to use some little cam snaps on mine. So I have my cam snaps over here, and there are two different types, okay? One will be the male and one will be the female. So, But each one gets one of these caps with the sharp point, okay? So the female one, which is this one right up here, I'm going to put that one on the flap, and this one right here will go on the front of the pouch. And this one is the male one, okay? And I always have to look at one that I've already done before I do it, otherwise I get confused. But uh, the important thing is you want to make sure that you have a female and a male, okay? So you're going to find the center of your flap. Okay, I'm just going to eyeball it for right now. And I have this little awl tool here. And you're going to poke a little hole with the awl right through the flap. Okay, and then you're going to take one of the sharp pointy ones. You're going to put it right through that hole. Okay, and then you're going to take the female one and you're going to put it on that pointy post. Just put it on nice and tightly. Then you'll want to take this tool, which is the setter, and the cap, this cap right here, that is going to sit in the bottom. So it's going to sit in the black part down here. So you want to get that underneath the snap, and then this top 
almost clear part up here, that's going to fit down into the female part of the snap. So this is what it looks like here, okay? And then you're just going to press really hard. And when you're done, what it does is it spreads that little point out so that cap now cannot come off. All right? And now we're going to get ready to put in the other side of the snap onto the pouch. So now we need to know where to place the snap on here. So this is what I do, and if you have another way of doing it, do it however you like. I just take a little bit of paint on a paintbrush, just some white paint. And be careful, I'm probably being a little messy here right now. And then I just close it and press it down. And now I have the area where my other half needs to go. So now you're going to take the awl again and you're going to poke a hole right in the center of that circle that the paint mark left. Okay. And then you'll take the other half of the snap and you're going to put it from the inside just like that. And there's my little yellow point coming out. And then I'm going to put the male side onto that post. And then I'm going to take my setter again and I'm going to have the cap right here sit in this little black well again. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling because it's hard to see what you're doing. Okay, so now here's what I have. I have the clear part on the male side of the snap and I have the black part with the uh, yellow cap sitting down in this part right here and then you're just going to squeeze it. And I'm going to have to do it again because it wasn't seated properly. Okay, and then you just press. And there you go. So now it's spread that point out again inside the male part there. And then you just close up your snap. Okay? And then you're done. So there you go. And here's the one that I made previously. So I have one that just has a D-ring on it. And I have one that has a swivel hook on it. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. And I hope that you enjoy making the pouch. Please like and subscribe.